One of the Young Turks. Oh, we got a great show here for you, man. We got three or four stories in this show. Watch out for your socks, because they're about to get knocked off. I I can't wait on two of them. I I think I'm on load on two of them right off the bat in the first segment. (laughs) I'd like to tease you a little more, but I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't play with it. Can't win with it. All right, first, I'd like to make it clear to you guys that... uh, You know, yesterday we said uh, on our Twitter account that uh, our inside source at Discovery would be joining us today. Well, there has been a lockdown at Discovery. Uh, Emails have been sent. Supervisors have been dispatched. They understand that the TYT Army has infiltrated the building. And they have sent security, and they told everybody involved there, uh, we're coming to get you. We will come to your house if you ever dare speak to the Young Turks. Now... Uh, we don't want to get our source in trouble. Uh, we care and love about our audience, so uh, we're not going to bring them on today, okay? Uh, but discover it. You think this is over? It ain't over. <laughs> the TYT Army is still in the building. Uh-oh. Think about it. Batten down the hatches. See if it winds up helping. <laughs> God, I'm having fun with this. Man, they, they're in a panic over there, man. We sent them in a panic. They're like, oh, what, Young Turks, what's going on? Why did they reveal that, that we, the Sarah Palin show sucks? But that wasn't supposed to get out to anybody. Oh, man, we spent $2 million on her. By the way, you know, they spent 800000 to $1.2 million per episode. It's not just her salary. Her salary is $2 million. Uh, but Daily Beast is reporting, let's say, to take the middle number there, a million dollars. A million dollars an episode. So that's uh, eight episodes, $8 million they got on the line, and the advertisers were laughing and rolling their eyes going, ooh. So uh, they don't want that word getting out, and they're like, damn it! Why did TYT put the word on the street? Hey, Discovery, how you doing? <laughs> are, we, are we not going to get a can- contract on the Learning Channel now? Damn it! <laughs> that's how we roll, man. That's how we roll. We, we don't, uh, we're not uh, pulling any punches. But, interestingly enough, I'm going to do a little random announcement here. Starting next week, a big sponsor on the Young Turks. Uh-oh, interesting. Uh, we're going to take a, a, a big corporate sponsor and they're going to sponsor the show a little bit. Ha-ha, <laughs> how you like them apples? Uh, it'll be Archer Daniels Midland slash Halliburton slash Z slash Blackwater. Okay, no, it's going to be a brand you recognize. And I'll be honest with you, as you guys, as I always am, we're going to sell, try to sell the living crap out of it because I think it's a good product, and they're going to help the show a lot. So that'll be great. So we'll do that on Monday. That'll be a big... And these guys don't even know yet. The call came in today. All right, so... Like I said, we got a great show ahead for you guys. Oh, we do. We still have a guest I'm v- super excited about. Uh, well, we also have a plastic surgeon coming in later in the show. The Beverly Hills 90210 doctor, fake breasts, etc. That's fun. That's in the third hour. But we have a financial analyst. We have a financial analyst, and I'm the only man in America that is super jazzed about that. Okay, he's another guy that's r- uh, totally on top of what's happening. It's going to help us break down a financial reform. Should we be encouraged by what Obama is doing uh, recently? And tomorrow in the studio, Simon Johnson. Oh, I can't get enough of that. All right, look, let's get it going. Um, we have a controversy in War Acres Church. It's a funny uh, name for a church, if you ask me, but it's W A R R. And uh, it's in Oklahoma. And we have some video. Uh, I'm, we're going to show you the video, and then I'm going to come back and tell you some more awesome quotes from some of the parishioners and uh, the controversy here. And you'll see it the minute you see the crucifix. Is is there something wrong on Jesus's belly? All right. With that lead in, let's watch. Some say shows an image of genitalia on Jesus. Here are three things you should know. Churchgoers at St. Charles Catholic Church in War Acres are divided in opinion about the crucifix that hangs above the main altar. Reverend Philip Seaton tells the Oklahoman, quote, there are a couple people who have left the parish, and there are people in the parish who don't like it and have stayed. The crucifix is about 10 feet tall. It's been hanging above the altar since February 21st. Seaton said the crucifix doesn't concern him, and there are no plans to remove it. However, 
Numerous current and former church parishioners contacted the Oklahoma this week, expressing outrage at what many called, quote, a pornographic depiction of Jesus. Number two, the crucifix in question is a San Damiano cross, a common Catholic icon. It originated in Italy in the 12th century. It's widely associated with St. Francis of Assisi and the order he founded, the Franciscans. The original cross is in Assisi, Italy. Janet Jamie, a local artist known for her religious artwork, was commissioned by the church to design the crucifix. All right, number three, St. Charles Church has released a document. You can read that two-page document online at News OK. And what do you think? News is OK has a poll, and after 1,500 votes, 62% of you said it's not offensive. Share your thoughts online at newsok.com. Uh, come on, come on, come on. I, I love that. I love that. Is there a question? Is there a question? First of all, it's 10 feet tall, OK? There's a giant penis on Jesus' belly. It's so obvious. Now, you know me. I'm the least prudish guy in the world, and I'm not the first guy to jump to the defense of you know, people who are overly sensitive on the issues of religion. In fact, when John Ashcroft covered up the statues because they had naked breasts behind him in the Justice Department, I thought it was the most comical thing I'd ever heard. But there it is! There's a giant penis on Jesus' belly! Of course they're offended! Don't tell me you guys can't see that! Jerry, you can see it, right? No? I can see it, but didn't it have some, like, historical background who to it and everything? Who cares? Right. So, I mean, come on, man. I'd be a little embarrassed to bring my kids into that church. and be like, Dad, what's, what's going on on Jesus' stomach? But I guarantee some people don't see that. I guarantee you. It's not like 100% of the population would see that if they're going to church without the mindset of saying, looking for a penis on there. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I'm, you, th you, th really, you think 100% of people see that. It's, like, uh, it's it, like looking at one of those perspective things and you say, look at it closely and move, slowly move it away from your face. Sometimes people don't see it. I hear you, man. I'm going with 93% of the churchgoers are seeing that. I'm going to let, funny enough, Jesus decide this. Jesus is going to be the uh, tiebreaker here. But hold on. Before we go to Jesus to decide on Jesus, uh, I want to tell you what some of the parishioners are saying. Uh, they say, I think it's an embarrassment to our Lord. I think it's an embarrassment to our parishioners. I think it's an embarrassment to our visitors. Uh, I th think somewhere in the story they said now there are more kids coming to churches. From local high school, they're like, oh, come on, look at this. <laughs> or, or at least they were concerned about the sexualization, as one of them says. Quote, I was appalled at the sexualization of Christ. Look, I'm not saying that she did it on purpose. I'm not saying the artist was like, this is going to be funny. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, they're going to, 10 feet tall, they're going to add a church. That's what I'm saying. I thought you were saying that. No, no, no. I'm not saying she intended it. And it might be subconscious, and she should look into that subconscious. I don't know what she's got floating around back there in the back of her mind. Uh, but I, if you can't see it, I mean, I, I don't know how you can't see it. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, finally, uh, somebody was brought in. Uh, is it Sean Ann Smith? She visited the church, and she said, quote, I was horrified. I believe in freedom of expression. I believe in artistic freedom. I believe that a church is a holy place, and I certainly don't want people telling anyone how to worship, but I was shocked, stunned, and if I hadn't been prepared already, I think I would have just been ill. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Okay, it's a penis. You don't have to get sick over it. I mean, is that your normal reaction to a penis? Like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, just bring it down. Bring it down. Nonetheless, if I was the church, I'd be honest with you, man. I I'd take it down. I'd be like, I can't have it, man. I can't play with it. I can't win with it. All right, so let's go to Jesus of East L.A. to break the tie. Uh, J.R. is not convinced. Uh, I am thoroughly convinced. Jesus is, or Jesus, is there a penis on Jesus' belt? Yeah, yeah, there is a penis there, man. It's, yeah, if you don't see that, something's wrong with you, man. <laughs> Especially for kids who go, they're going to be giggling all the time. So, yeah. I mean, imagine you're in that church. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I went to a Catholic school all my life. Every time we'd go to church, I'd be laughing about it. I don't think it'd get old. <laughs> but on the other hand, maybe it uh, makes you go to church more often. <laughs> probably, probably wouldn't. Though. <laughs> In the end. Cannot play with them. Cannot win with them. Cannot coach with them. Can't do it. Can't do it. <laughs> Come on, that's so much fun, man. Now, it's just, don't get me wrong. Everybody in War Acres Church, bring it down. You're right. We, you know, most of us see it. We, it's not necessarily intentional, but perhaps there's a better crucifix to go that is not to, to go in the church that is not as distracting. Okay, so that's probably what I would do, and then I'd hang it in the back. You know, and yeah, I don't want to get rid of it. I mean, they probably paid for it and stuff. 
Put it in one of the priests' room. I'm sure one of them wants it. What? 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 I didn't say anything. What? Okay. All right. Always got to take it over the top, don't it? All right. Look, we got a lot on the Tea Party guys today. Okay. We got some great tea. Why? Because it's tax day. And I got great information on taxes for you, okay? Oh, our taxes are getting raised. Obama, the tax man. Of course, that's not true. I, I have the facts. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the facts. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we'll give you more from the Tea Party guys in a little bit. But I can't wait to do this story. So I'm a fire on it. Uh, Christy Harvey, uh, frequent TYT contributor and guest host, uh, sent this in. Bless her heart. I had not seen it before that. I love this story. So they uh, went in Boston where they were protesting. Remember, Boston Commons, Sarah Palin was there. Uh, the uh, Boston Globe went and interviewed some uh, supporters at that rally. Oh, okay, great. And um, remember, they say I, they are so mad, as Sarah Palin put it, at the lamestream media for saying that they have issues with minorities or that they maybe don't have all of their facts right. So let's go to the people themselves. Well, first they talked to Lindsay Lacombe. Uh, she wore an I Love Fox News t-shirt to the rally. And she had driven in, driven in from uh, Fitchburg, and uh, she wanted to protest health care reforms. Um, she says, quote, this was just something I really wanted to participate in. She's at Fitchburg State College. And she continues, quote, I don't understand how everyone can get free health care. It's not right. When the reporter explained to her that, they did not get free health care, that that was not the package. You have to pay for the health care. There's no free health care in the package, right? She's like, oh, quote, well, I'm not a political science major. But then why did you come to the rally to rally against health care reform? Oh, we're just getting warmed up. All right, that's number one. Number two, Anna uh, Kozo Kozovka, let's go with that, uh, 59 years old from Hanover, um, she says uh, that Obama is, quote, a communist and all about the redistribution of wealth. Not surprised. Uh, she continues, though, it's just the minorities and the illegals who are getting benefits. Everybody who works gets nothing. No, no, this is about health care. No, this is about health care. Where in the health care package does it say, oh, by the way, the minorities will benefit from this, and so will the illegals. Uh, but if you work for a living, you get nothing. I mean, it's so comically misinformed because it ain't about health care. They're just so mad. Ah, it's going away from us and it's going to the damn minorities and the illegals. No, no, it has nothing to do with race. No, no, no. Except if you talk to them <laughs> and they tell you. Right? All right. But we're not even anywhere near the best parts of this. So, per, uh, person number three, Gene Thoreau of Springfield. He's a 57 year old uh, retired Air Force Chief Master Sergeant. And he says that uh, uh, he is against the government run health care. When asked what kind of uh, health care he has, of course, he has government run health care administered by the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs. Now, Veteran Affairs is not just health care that is uh, for insurance that's socialized. The doctors, the hospitals, everything is socialized. It's the most socialist thing we have in our entire government is uh, health care from uh, Veteran Affairs. Well, when confronted uh, with this fact, he says, well, look, he's worried about 30 million newly insured Americans entering the system. He says, quote, where does it say in the Constitution that there's a mandate for all Americans to have health care? The bill will ravage health care that I get. So in other words, yeah, 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 of course I get government-run health care, and I love it. But I don't want all these 30 million new people to come in and have what I have. No, I want to be greedy and make sure that I re retain it and that we don't give it to anybody else. All right, but here we go, the best part of all of this. Valerie and Rob Shirk, they gathered up their 10 homeschool children to bring them to the rally because they wanted to uh, educate them about uh, government-run health care, and it was a learning, quote, a learning opportunity for their children. They range in uh, age from 9 months to 15 years old, and uh, they wanted to uh, hold up signs criticizing the government for defying the will of the people. And uh, Valerie Shirk says, the problem in this country is that too many people are looking for handouts. I agree with the signs that say, share my father's work ethic, not his paycheck. We have to do something about the whole welfare mentality in this country. Damn right, Valerie. So what kind of health care do you have, Valerie? Well, it turns out the couple relies on Medicaid for their kids and for their whole family. 
Now, Medi understand, Medicare is for older people. Medicaid is a handout. Okay, now, that's a good thing in my eyes because some people need it. Otherwise, they can't take care of their kids. But it, there is, I mean, you can't argue against government handouts and take Medicaid. So when confronted with this enormous hypocrisy, she's had a protest, protesting government handout of health care when she's getting it for her family. When asked, uh, I'm quoting the Boston Globe here, when asked why her family used state-subsidized health care when she criticized people who take handouts, Valerie Shirk says she did not want to stop having children and that her husband's income was not enough to cover the family with private insurance. Well, then, of course, she had to take the government handout. She says, quote, I know there's a dichotomy because of what we get from the state, but I just look at each of my children as a blessing. You see how she explains it to herself? Because you've got to have an answer, right? I mean, you can't, this kind of hypocrisy is so overwhelming. She thinks, oh, what are you doing, attacking my children? Well, my children, of course, deserve government handouts, but not your kids. She doesn't see it as a government handout as much as she says, my children are a blessing. What do you want me to do? Only have nine of them? Only have eight of them? Like Octomom? No, I need to have more, actually. Octomom has 14. <laughs> but their hypocrisy knows no bounds. And more importantly, their ignorance knows no bounds. They don't know a damn thing about the bill. You ask them over and over, they don't know what's in it. All they know is the damn minorities are getting it and the other people who weren't working. And I mean, we should get it. I should hold on to it. And not you. They're taking our country away. You wonder why we laugh at the Tea Party or uh, protests. You wonder why we're dismissive of them. Because when you ask them what they're doing and why they're there and what they're protesting and what they actually do with their real lives, they're a joke. There's, it's, it's a little sad and certainly chock full of ignorance. So... You just, by the way, go. I mean, we have more later in the show today. Just go out if you want. Some people said they're going to the protest just to mess with people. You don't have to mess with them. Just ask them why they're there. They have no freaking idea because they got riled up by the hate mongers. That's why Steve Cohen was right when he came on the program. Uh, Representative Cohen from Tennessee. Of course this is about culture. This it doesn't have a damn thing to do with health care. All right. I got more where that came from. Come right back, Young Turks. The number one progressive talk show, don't you forget it. That's right. Politics. Back on a Young Turks. I'm your host, Jay Huger. Uh, J.R. Jackson's producing, Jesus Godoy's directing. And it is tax day, everybody. So you know how bad the Democrats raised your taxes. God, it's got to hurt today because they, they love to tax and spend. And I'll tell you what, probably all of you felt the pain today as your taxes went through the roof. Well, uh, CBS News New York Times poll. Uh, asked people, and 24% of them said that uh, their taxes had increased under Obama. 53% of them said, well, look, actually, it remained about the same. And only 12% thought their taxes had gone down. Okay? So the perception is it's either stayed about the same or it's gone up. Only 12% think it went down. And furthermore, if you ask the Tea Party activists in a separate poll, we find out that 64% of them think the administration has raised their taxes. Now you want to know the reality? According to the nonpartisan uh, tax organization called Citizens for Tax Justice, 98% of working families got a tax cut from the Obama administration. Yes, tax cut. 98% of working families. So only 12% believe they got the tax cut. In reality, 98% of them got it. 24% are like, oh, it's obvious, 64% of the teabaggers, oh, oh my God, oh, I paid more taxes. But did you actually pay more taxes? No, you paid less taxes. But who cares? Uh, Fox News told them they paid more taxes. So that's what they pay attention to. They don't actually pay attention to the check that they sign to the IRS or, or however they pay their taxes, property tax, et cetera. You know, those are all different, of course. They pay attention to what Fox News tells them. Now, one of the things that Fox News told them, speaking of property taxes, you know 47% uh, of Americans don't pay any taxes at all. Did you know that? Now, of course, that's not true. Uh, those don't pay inc uh, federal income tax. You still pay state and local tax. You still say some people pay property tax. Everybody pays sales tax. Uh, and you get your deductions off your paycheck. And that's where a lot of the problem comes in, because 
what the Obama team is now realizing is, oh my God, you know, Bush did the thing of, oh, here's a $600 check. And the guy's like, oh my God, Bush gave me a tax cut. What o Obama has done is he's decreased your taxes, so you're actually getting more b back on your checks from work. But it's so incremental, it's hard for people to notice. So they don't notice that, understandably on that front. But they do notice Fox News and Rush Limbaugh telling them that they had to pay more taxes. So that's how this misinformation campaign works and is successful. That's why I tell the Democrats all the time, you got to make your case. If you don't make your case, how the hell are people going to know? Now, uh, the reality is, so who did get tax increases? Because some people did. Because remember, he's uh, saying, we're going to roll back the Bush tax cuts for people making over two, couples making over $250,000 and individuals making over $200,000. So what happened to them? Oh, wow. Well, like if you listen to Fox News, we ran a Laura Ingram clip a couple of days ago where she's like, oh, not everybody can sit in the wagon. Somebody's got to pull the wagon. What about the poor rich people? In fact, we've played many clips like that from all the conservative hosts for you guys. Well, here is the draconian tax increases for the richest people in the country. The top two income tax brackets go up from 33% to 36%. Ooh. And from 35% to 39.6%. Now that is exactly where they were under Bill Clinton. And remember, they said, oh, if you increase taxes like Clinton did, it'll destroy the economy. Except for the fact that our economy has never been better uh, than when Bill Clinton was president in the 1990s. Now, look, there's a lot of reasons why you might say that's the case, and that's an interesting economic argument. But you can't say that Clinton tanked the economy with his tax cuts. That's not even remote uh, with his tax increases. That's not even remotely true. So if we go back to the Clinton levels, that worked. Okay? And they're not draconian. They're, as you can tell, 3% increase in one case, and for the top bracket, a 4.6% increase. Now, uh, there are two other increases. Uh, one is increasing the capital gains tax from 15 to 20 percent for married filers with incomes above 250,000. Understand that for a second. If you work your ass off at your job and you they deduct the taxes from your pay and then you got to pay the IRS, etc., you're paying a certain tax rate. Now, it, it could be 25 percent. It could be if you're in the upper brackets, 39.6 percent, etc. It varies, right, depending on where your income is. But if you don't do anything, you're Paris Hilton, and you're just getting money from your grandfather's estate, and you're that money's in stocks, and you just get capital gains, she only pays 15%, even though she doesn't do anything. It's capital gains, only 15%. To me, that's grotesque I, that, I, and totally unjustifiable. Now, Obama's moved that from 15% to 20% for people making above $250,000. Oh, draconian socialism, communism, Maoism. And then the same exact thing for uh, uh, divided income, uh, I'm sorry, dividend income between it going up from 15% to 20% uh, for filers above $250,000. Okay? So those are your real tax increases, and therefore people making above $250,000 on very specific things that I think are very small and understandably so. Okay, now. By the way, in case, how about the average? How about all of us, including the rich, right? You put it all together, the average family of four right now is paying a comically low 4.6% of its income in federal income tax. That's it, 4.6%. Now, again, there are other taxes, sales tax, property tax, et cetera, right? State and local. But as far as this, oh my God, the burden, as Steve King says, they got the thumb on our back. Oh my, oh, IRS, federal income tax. 4.6% of your income for an average family of four. That's what all this belly aching is about? In fact, actually, that's another amazing thing. They did another poll, and they asked people, do you think what you're uh, paying is uh, too high, fair? It was the American Enterprise Institute. They were a very conservative group, so they were hoping that they'd get results like, oh, totally unfair. I'm just, you know what they had? Majority of Americans said, no, we're, I'm paying about the right amount. No, I'm not overpaying. No, this seems fair. Okay, but you know why? Because it's not that much. How do I know? It's the second lowest we've ever had in 50 years. These are facts. You can't argue with these unless you're Fox News and you make up something else. Okay, but go look them up for yourself online. Okay. So we're not paying too much taxes. Obama didn't raise your taxes. He lowered taxes for 98% of us. 
So that's what's happening on tax day. <laughs> now, tune into Fox News and the Tea Party protests and see if that's what you hear. My guess is they're not going to concentrate on those facts. They're going to tell you other things that aren't even remotely true, and we'll cover those tomorrow. <laughs> okay. So now, speaking of people that are lying to you about the taxes, now I just gave you the numbers on the taxes. I, I'm going to say it for the third time. I'm learning from Mitch McConnell. <laughs> okay. Taxes have been lowered for 98% of us. Now listen and watch this ad from the Republicans, from the GOP, on Obama and how he's raising your taxes. Watch. Many think April 15th is tax day. Wrong. For President Obama, every day is tax day. Your money isn't safe. He knows where you keep it. Obama's government-run health care bill contains $570 billion in new taxes. Wheelchairs, taxed. Sneezing, taxed. Breathing, taxed. <laughs> and if you don't buy health care, the tax man will come for you. You can't run. There is no place to hide. Over the next few years, IRS agents will begin to multiply. The crippling tax burden will close businesses. Hiring will slow. The government wants your money, and President Obama knows where to get it. Government will grow. Personal freedoms will decline. If you want to keep your money, get involved. Go to GOP.com and tell President Obama and congressional Democrats enough is enough. It's your money, but not for long. The tax man cometh. That is fear mongering 101. That's how you do it. And what is the aim of that? To protect the top 2% of Americans from paying 3 to 4.5% more in taxes. Less than 5% more in taxes for the top 2% of Americans. That's what's happening under Obama. 98% of us got tax cuts under Obama. And what do they say there? They're going to tax breathing. And they're going to tax sneezing. And then they put up why. Those are because there's a tax on medical supplies companies. That's part of the health care bill. Okay? And what the, they had to pay for the health care bill, right, so that it doesn't increase the deficit. The health care bill decreases the deficit. Why? They had to raise the taxes somewhere. And they got it from medical supplies. They got it from uh, health care uh, uh, providers like hospitals. They made deals with them and the drug companies. And that's why they put that incredibly misleading uh, you know, uh, lines in that ad. And, uh, and by the way, c the drug companies, for example, love those deals. They spent $150 million in advertising in favor of the health care pack package. Why? Because they got so many other deals uh, where they restricted competition. They're like, oh, you want us to pay a little extra taxes here? Oh, hey, hey, come on, come on, come on here, 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 have at it. Who cares? We love this bill. So they take something that those guys generally love, and they say, they're taxing your breathing. The tax man cometh for the guy who funded this ad who's a multimillionaire. But we'll pretend it's you. And, of course, what's the other part of the fear mongering? Your personal freedoms will be restricted. He's coming to your house. See that Obama's really, really scary. You should be scared because he's going to take your money. No, he's not. But that's what you, they want you to think. And then they go, what, 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 what do you mean? We, we instigated things? We riled people up? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Go to GOP.com and find out how Obama's going to come into your house and take your wife. What, what, what? And stop you from breathing. What? <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't bring the wife into that commercial. <laughs> That'll be next. Like a little sweet lady in the corner, like, an Obama cometh. <laughs> no, kind of yes. That's a different story. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, you know who's getting hurt on tax day? Obama. It's because he makes a lot of money. You know how much money he made? $5.5 million this year. Jesus, Lord, mercy. So because he raised the rates for people like him, who are in the top income bracket, he's paying $1.8 million in taxes. Man, here's what I thought. 
those uh, kids, what is it, Sasha and Baron and Cohen or whatever, uh, man, they got it made. They're never going to have to work another day in their lives. If, if they knew what was up, right now, if I was in their minds, I was like, I'm in their positions and I know what I know, I'd be like, oh, oh let's go hang out by the pool. Let's go, come on, can you get me some iced tea? Okay, I mean, he made $5.5 million this year. He's not even trying. It's just off his books. Okay? Those bo that book money is going to pile in and pile in. And then when he retires, there's the speeches. Remember Bush? He's like, ha, ha, ha. when I leave office, I'm going to make some speeches. <laughs> you know, rebuild up the bank. <laughs> right? Imagine the money Obama's going to get for speeches. I mean, look at the money Palin's getting for speeches, right? Oh, they don't have to work another day in their lives. They don't know. Those poor kids. Right now, Barack and Michelle are lying to them. They say, oh, you got to study hard. No, you don't, Sasha. Malia, ixnay on the study A. Okay, sit by the pool. You're done. Your work is done here. <laughs> look, look, of course I don't want to encourage them to do that. I hope that they study for the sake of studying. I hope they get themselves an education. It's very important. Um, you know, enlighten yourself, make yourself a better person, and then do what, you know, pleases your soul. Or sit by the pool, relax. Your dad's got it covered. <laughs> oh, God, what a great option that would be. All right, you know what I'm going to do? In the post game, uh, I will tell you what I would do if I was in Sasha and Malia's position. <laughs> okay, how would I spend the money? <laughs> what direction would I go? Uh, we'll talk. Anna, J.R. Hayes, we'll bring him into it. What would we do with all of Obama's money? Okay, that'll be in today's post game. Hey, membership has its privileges. Okay, now, uh, one more thing on taxes. Should I save this for later? Yeah, we got an interview coming up. This point, from the most unexpected source, is a brilliant point about taxes. Former top Lieberman staffer with an excellent point about how we should raise taxes on some specific individuals. I will right, we'll do that in the third segment. Next segment, uh, guy I can't wait to talk to about uh, financial reform, and he'll tell me whether I'm right or wrong about the iceberg straight ahead. All right, Young Turks. On the All right, back on the Young Turks. Ah, one of my favorite songs of all time. Yes. <laughs> Taco. Did he ever make a second song or no? That was it? He's like putting on the Ritz. He put on the Ritz and then he just walked out. He just out. made this one song and that's it? Yeah, <laughs> he must have made other songs, but they didn't break out. Mm -hmm. um, who names himself Taco? kind of weird. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, um, you know, tomorrow I will be on the Dylan Radigan program at 4 p.m. Check it out, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I uh, am likely to go in guns blazing. I don't know if you know that about me. So that should be fun. Um, okay, uh, you know what? Here's what we're going to start with. Uh, Tiger Woods has a new ad out. Uh, it looks very similar to the ad he did with his dad's voiceover, mm -hmm. um, but it's an interesting choice that Nike made in this ad, so uh, let's run it. We men want to take a woman in our arms, and a girl wants to take a man in her arms, and pretty soon we want to take him to bed with us. Go on. Go over there and touch it. Put your hand on her breast. See how far she'll let you go. God made the female breast, young man. What's wrong with you handling it, fondling it? What's there in a couple of three other places? There's the mouth, there's the anus, you can put it there. Oh, sure, you're married to this girl. Ah, uh, come on, uh, uh, let's have a good time. That tastes good, that feels good. I can't tell you how good that feels and how good that tastes. I go to church too, but, uh, you know, it didn't make me queer. Well, I wouldn't buy that 100%. Um, uh, please erase that from the, ta uh, the tape. I didn't. It, uh, let's edit that out, will you? <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> oh, I love it. Go ahead, girl. Go over there and touch it. <laughs> Go there and touch it. That's a different ghost talking to Tiger. <laughs> okay. That's the ghost that talks to him on a daily basis. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's oral. He's back. He says I should go ahead and touch it. There's a couple of two other three places. Oh, I can't get enough of that. Uh, that was produced, of course, by J.R. Jacks. That was great. I loved it. Oh, I love that. There's so many little sound bites that we don't have on here of Oral Roberts oh, that yeah. are very pervy wanker. 
Oh no, there's so many of them. I mean, there's the the one where he's like, and then you get so excited, and you turn her over, <laughs> and you go for the anus. And you're like, whoa, whoa. And then the, that part I had forgotten, the part at the end with Jr. where he's like, and then you know you go to church and you become queer or something. And he's like, well, I wouldn't say that, or like something about how he isn't queer. He's like, well, that's not 100% true. And then he's like, oh, edit that out from the tape. Oh, my God. Come on, that's great. That's gold. Oh, this, that is an, and that's a gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. N nothing like Oral's ghost. The dude's name is Oral. Come on. Come on. It's like the greatest thing that ever happened. All right. Uh, now, uh, a tragedy. Um, before we go to the tragedy, I have some updates. Updates. These go. are great updates. So yesterday we did the top 10 hottest women on YouTube list. Yes. Okay, and it was uh, very controversial. <laughs> the YouTube uh, people have spoken. Uh huh. Okay, and they are claiming that we made a huge mistake because we didn't include one woman. That's interesting. Yes. I, I, I listened to that, and I, you know, and I think that's, I'm glad that you brought that up here. Yes. The girl that everyone thinks should be included in the top ten is Charlie James, 1975. Now, I had never heard of her before. However, I did a little research, and I happened to find a YouTube video of her. <laughs> and uh, she's a workout guru. Oh, is that right? Yeah, she's a workout guru. So we have a video of her. There she is. That's Charlie James, 1975. Uh, uh, no, you know, I considered her. Okay, I should tell you this, okay? I, I did see her. Look, I do very thorough research, man. You think people slip by me? Nobody slips by me. Mm -hmm. um, here was my problems with her. One, I don't like that kind of a, a body. Like, the, the, I mean, her abs are the situation, you know? She's on the Jersey Shore. And I, I, I'm not into it. I feel like she's going to snap me in half or something. So I, I wasn't buying what she was selling. And then the second thing is, I thought, is that hot for words? Yeah, she looks exactly like hot for <laughs> words, except a more toned version, if that's even possible. And dude, but I like the untoned version. Yeah, I do too. Um, the reason why I chose this video is that's amazing that her boobs don't move. <laughs> I, I cool. think that's so incredible. Like she's jumping, and they are staying right in place. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. So she has fake boobs, which I, you know, God bless. Uh, with, you know, a really fit dude's body. No, she doesn't look like a dude. I think... I, I mean, look, okay, I'm being way over the top on that. But it's just not my type. Yeah. You know? So I hear you, and it's perfectly valid, you know, to bring up other people that I should have considered. But I, I'm telling the uh, community, I did consider her and rejected it. Sorry. Interesting. Uh, JR, do you have any thoughts on uh, Charlie James, 1975? Uh, I, have, I haven't listened to the last couple things you guys have said because Tom has been there saying he likes fat, huge, rounded, rotund, circular Buddhist looking women. Um, <laughs> and I've been trying to dispel that because he said she looks like a man. Now, the thing See, that's I don't. That's funny, that's what I was saying. Yeah, the thing I don't approve of is the fake breasts. It looked like, at least, they look like they're fake breasts to me. I mean, come on. Of course. Well, I mean, I'm just, I, I never like just assuming things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, she has fake boobs. I don't know, but I, I think she does. When you jump around and they don't move. Well, they're tied up really tight, too, but, you know, pretty cool. that's, that's what sports bras are for, right? Anyway, um, yeah, I believe they're fake, so let's get that out in the open. Um, she's, it's, I, I haven't looked at her face yet because we've been arguing about her abs, but I don't know. I mean, I think his whole list was pretty questionable outside of, like, three people, so, I mean, she could easily be on it. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, there's no question there's a lot of controversy surrounding the list. I understand that, and I invite it. Okay, come and get it. But like, oh, but no, you're, I'm sorry. Your, um, your statement about she could snap you in half, I'm sure she weighs 115 pounds. She looks like she could. Yeah, there's, of course she can. Are you kidding me? Yeah, way too She bad. couldn't even look like that. She looks really, <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, but like, and, and wow. what is it? But why? That's I always impressive. Think, it's impressive, but I always think why? Like, why are you doing that incredibly strange workout? <laughs> no. And who else because would do it's that? it's good for your body. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'm against exactly. it. Look, I'm going to say something. I'm definitely jealous of her stomach in some ways. Like, I would love to have a stomach that flat, but not necessarily so defined. But the rest of her body is banging. All right. I, I, real quick, real quick. Uh, Jesus, yeah, like, you're the ultimate judge of this stuff. So uh, what's happening here? What's the conclusion? Oh, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm in between you and JR, I guess. I think she's hot. But I, I guess ultimately I would lean 
to Jr. by a little bit, not by much. Right. But I mean, she still has a great body. Yeah. Her her chest is just her chest just looks too much like a man's chest. That's the only downside. Yeah. So look, you know, we're, I'm not saying she's not hot. I get people who are saying she's hot, of course, right? But she ain't the top ten. No, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, she's not in the top ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's over. It's yeah. official. You have a camera up your nose. That's not the right one, but that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, and All one right. more thing before we get to the stories. We're going to do the tweet of the day every day in the third hour. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, and I today's tweet of the day is from Dulce Candy 87 to the Young Turks. Okay? Okay. You want to know what she says? Yes. She says, oh, my God, I love the female reporter. That's me. And then she says, she's so sweet. Thanks for the feature, Young Turks. All right. I was supposed to pick the tweet of the day. Yep, too bad. Okay, but you know what the funny thing is? I picked the same one. Oh, you did? Oh, Shmoopy Pop Poopy! <laughs> By the way, all the, a lot of those uh, uh, women have checked in. Uh, Dual Say Candy, Sprigget 24, Hot for Words, Andrea's Obama Girl. Choice. Oh, Andrea's Choice too? Yeah, she did. And they were all like, whoop whoop, yeah. what up? Did they all check in and mention your name, Jake? I don't remember. Did they say, thank you, Jake? Or, I like Jake's top... 10 hottest YouTube list. You know, I was number six or whatever. What is, I, I, my point is, uh, do say, was it 124? I don't know what her number is. Yeah, 187. 187. 180, <laughs> no, 80, 87 for the year she was born. Oh, sorry. I thought it was a 187. As we're throwing on all this love, how come Dulce can't give up a real name? The female reporter. What's going on? Come on. Oh, on Anna. Yeah. On. That's all right. Come it's on. okay. Yeah, I don't mind that much. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, she's in love with Dulce. Yeah, so. I mind. She can do no wrong in my yeah, eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's kind of hot. <laughs> no, oh, no. by the way, you know, we were talking about fake tits and stuff. You know, a lot of people thought that you should move up the list because you're real. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. So. <laughs> well, all right. Uncomfortable. <laughs> so, let's get to some of the stories. We have so many good stories. Okay, go. Okay, so let's start with Larry King. Yesterday, we talked about how Larry King and his wife, Sean, are going to divorce. Uh, in fact, they've already filed the paperwork. And now we have a little more information as to why they're divorcing. It turns out that they're both accusing each other of cheating. All right? And Sean has been accusing Larry of cheating on her with her own sister. Don't it. Get it, get it. Larry, I didn't know you rolled like that. Damn. So okay, that's Sean. That's Can Sean. we see the sister? The sister looks a lot like her, but apparently just a little younger. What? No, that's still Sean, isn't it? Or is that the sister? I can't tell. That's the thing. I think that's Sean. And the sister's name is Shannon. Uh-huh. And um, the reason why uh, Larry King's wife started believing that they're having an affair is because the National Enquirer uh, published a story about how Larry King is spending so much money on Sean's sister and how they've been spotted together. And Sean really started to believe the story. And uh, when Shannon said that she was going to sue the National Enquirer, uh, Sean said, no, you better not. If you do, I'm going to reveal a whole lot more information about you. Now, apparently Larry King bought her like a hundred some odd thousand dollar car, the sister, and apparently they claim he spent up to a million dollars on her. And the sister says, no, look, Larry takes care of everybody in the family and he just happened to take care of me and I, he's like a dad to me. Here's what you don't get someone you're not sleeping with, a hundred and sixty thousand dollar car. <laughs> okay, so uh, that story's a little, yeah, he takes care of everybody in the family, he gives him a million dollars. Uh, yeah. Look, I don't know Larry's personal life, but eh, that looks a little fishy to me. Look, I would not be okay with my husband showering my sister with gifts. I mean, come on. Uh, At the would, very least, that's super weird, it's, right? It's weird. It would make me feel uncomfortable. It's just not right. I'm, I'm not okay with that. Yeah. I mean, if he's taking care of your family and he's looking out for pops and mom, everybody's happy. Yeah. But if he's like, oh, man, your sister, I bought her a Nice ride, you know why? Yeah. You know, your sister's nice, and I want to be nice to her. You know what I am? I'm a pro. That's what pros do. I'm a professional. Look it up in the book. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, get some. Get some. And you know what? Now that you're divorced, it's okay. How brazen and awesome would it be if Larry King was like, yeah, that's it, you caught me. Now I'm dating the sister. Ugh. I'm 76 that's years old. What are you going to do? I mean, that's to be expected of the man. But the sister, <laughs> come on. 
No, and I'm kidding about that being expected of the man, sort of. Um, but <laughs> sort. if the sister did that, that's so shady. I would feel so hurt if my sister did something like that. I don't even have a sister, but I'm just imagining it. <laughs> imagining how angry you would be over it. Right. <laughs> like it makes Anna's blood boil even think of it. My sister did that to me. No, Matt, if you got a sister, you got to keep your man away from her. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sisters aren't supposed to be like that. But, you know, people are crazy. I was talking to Michael this morning. He... And he accurately described what the problem of the world is, because we were talking about this story, among others. Because, you know, Larry King said, oh, we were at the diner this morning. Was Larry King there? No, but every paparazzi in the world was. Oh. Access Hollywood, everybody was parked uh, outside the diner. And I walked in, and I'm like, Mike, what the hell is going on? Is there a celebrity in here or something? He's like, who, who always eats here, Jenk? And I was like, oh, right, 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 right. Uh, but he didn't come today, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's savvier than that. Anyway, um, Michael said, you know, there's one problem in the world. Dicks. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's true. I mean, they cause at least 50% of the problem in the world. Yes, I agree. And because, look, oh, your sister should be sacrosanct, right? Obviously, that's crazy. That's mm -hmm. terrible. That's vile. So it's the first thing that the little guy is going to think of. I mean, the big guy. <laughs> little guy. <laughs> Uh, it's terrible. Men are despicable human beings. Don't get me started. Okay. All right, let's go. Oh, one last thing. Imagine Ladis buy some other woman a $160,000 car. Yeah, I'd be really upset. And he says, no, 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 I'm just, we're just friends. No, over. Done. <laughs> I, I also I wonder this, though, Anna. With, if you had a sister, I think it might be different. I think because you're imagining this unknown person that doesn't exist right now, it'd be different. It, not that you would be okay with it happening, but it would just be so far out of the realm. Like you think Wait, this you think... effing sister that I would have might try and take my man. I think if no, it's your no, sister, no, no. it wouldn't, you know. Okay, if I had a sister, okay, I don't think I would really be as, you know, paranoid about her sleeping with my boyfriend, as I'm saying, right? But I would be paranoid about my boyfriend thinking about sleeping with my sister, and I'd be paranoid about it actually somehow happening. So I got to keep my man away from my sister. Look, here's something that I do. I keep my boyfriend away from my female friends at all times. Like that, you just gotta, you gotta keep it real. We have a mini Doug Christie's wife here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway, let's move forward. Okay, so Melissa Etheridge and Tammy Etheridge are separating. They've mm -hmm. been together for nine years and it's over. You know, it's amazing because I remember when Melissa Etheridge used to go out with Julie Cipher. That, I felt like that was a, like a couple of years ago. Turns out they've been going out for nine years. Man, time is flying by. And they've had two children. And they've had two kids. How is that possible? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> she's now, Tammy's 35. So you know what that means. Uh, Melissa grabbed her when she was 26. Get it, get it. <laughs> and Julie Cypher was hot too. Man, if I was a lesbian, I'd play just like Melissa does. I was just about to say, let's give him something to talk about. Except that's Bonnie Ray. <laughs> Does Tammy get half? Uh, no, that's exactly I mean, what that, I was thinking. It's both women. What, what is it now? What happens now? Oh, it's got to be half. Half, man. Equal, equal opportunity, right? Uh, there's nobody in America that's more for equal rights than I am. But that means that uh, your lesbian wife, half. Yeah, no question. You want rights? We'll give you rights. Not play. <laughs> By the way, I don't I don't know much about Tammy. Do you know anything about her, like as far as work or? Oh, I don't know anything about her except that Melissa was getting some. Okay, well, okay. I'm glad that we got that cleared up. Yeah, and by the way, I'm not kidding that of course she should get half. I like, of course, I don't think anybody should get half. But if we're going to apply the laws equally, of course we should apply them for better or for worse for uh, gay couples just like straight couples. Mm -hmm. The most obvious thing in the world. Agreed. So uh, Tammy likely very rich now. So they did a ceremony in 2003. That's the problem. It probably wasn't legal. And so she probably, she'll probably get plenty, but not as much as she would have mm -hmm. if they had a legal marriage. All right. And gays and lesbians, you sure you still want to get married? <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break here. Come right back.